Hello everyone, this is Diamond Dustification from YouTube again, and today we're going to talk real quick about contending for the gospel, because I've seen a lot of Christians out there that don't seem to grasp the fact that we are not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, nor are we to stand by idle and let them continue to subvert unsaved individuals and saved individuals alike, okay? That is not what we are called to do. Jesus Christ had told us plain as day that the world will hate us. So that does not mean rolling over and allowing people to continue to preach heresy and trying to shake hands with them and, and be buddy buddies. That's not how it's going to work. The Bible clearly warned us that in these last days, the, the great falling away from the truth would come. And we are in those very moments right now. And that is why all of the grace preachers out there right now are becoming increasingly fiery. Because we are contending for the truth. And the people that we are trying to teach these things are denying those teachings. The works heretics, that is. We're not after them because they have subverted themselves. A man who is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. In other words, we are to admonish those who are preaching heresy. Says it right there. And then we are to what? Reject them and not have fellowship with them because they are heretics. And we can find that in the Bible. After the first and second. A man that is a heretic. After the first and second admonition reject. Why? Because knowing that he is such subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Somebody accused me of committing sectarianism. And I'm going to show you that comment right now. He quotes 1 John 3. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Exactly. That is a statement of fact. You cannot sin in the spirit or in the soul. Because you are sealed by Holy Spirit and revived. And you are seated in the heavenly places. But you can and will sin in the body, Romans 7, 14 through 25. That has nothing to do with you. It's not about sinning in the flesh. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Do you know why? Because you are not, you cannot do any amount of righteousness if you are in the flesh. You are in the flesh if you are not saved. What makes you righteous is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ our Lord, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Jesus Christ died so that he could take the wrath that was meant for us, for our sins, upon himself on that cross of Calvary. He shed his blood and water for the forgiveness of our sins. He died. He rose again on the third day. He is seen of many. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. That is the gospel of our salvation. It is all sufficient. You have to get to a point where you believe that and that alone. If you do not believe that, then you are believing something else. It's as simple as that. You can try to twist it all you want. You cannot claim that you has, must add to salvation. He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's true, because if you're sinning, then you are of the devil. If you do not believe, you are of the devil. There's either or. For the devil, the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Unbelief and death. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin because he is born of God. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Exactly. But you must be, that righteousness must flow from the inward fruit of salvation. Okay, otherwise anything you do in the flesh is worthless. You know, there's plenty of atheists out there that would say they're good people. And some of them, outwardly, might just be good people. They're charitable, they're kind, they're not rude, they're respectful. Doesn't matter. You commit one sin, you've committed them all. That's why it says, those who are righteous doth not commit sin. For this is... Neither he that loveth not his brother. Exactly. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. If you don't have love then you're not saved. because. But it's not about what... You can't force yourself to love. Okay? You know, some people have a seared conscience. I had to deal with that for a while. It's all about having the love of God shed abroad in your hearts. It's His love manifesting through you because it is not I who lives, but Christ in me. For this is the message that you had heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was that wicked one. So he was unsaved and slew his brother. And wherefore slew him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Well, in that particular instance, Cain would have been unsaved. 
Okay, we can do we now we're not going to debate about whether or not Cain had salvation or not. That's not in question here in the end or in the beginning or in the middle. The point is, is that the Bible makes it very clear. And I just explained you then you say we're both right, but I'm certain that sectarianism is sin. Shall I judge? No, it's not sectarianism. Because the people that say that we must commit good righteous works in the flesh to maintain our salvation are not correct. They're not. They're trying to add to the cross of Christ. I And I gave you an interesting reply talking about my testimony here, okay? I went to a Catholic church where a Catholic priest there gave me the true gospel and tutored me in the word for five years. Most of you know my testimony. I'm not going to go over the big spew again. Okay, you can go watch that video if you want to know more about that. But I do not believe increasingly so that I was saved until after I got out of that church. Not because there was anything wrong with the church. He, the Catholic priest died. My grandfather got back on his feet and this new priest came in that wasn't, I didn't, I just did not take to him. There was something that was off and I wanted to get out of there. And unfortunately, there's not any other good righteous preachers around this area where I live. So I don't have a church right now and I probably won't until the rapture. <laughs> At that point, it won't, I won't need one. I'll have Jesus Christ. But the point of the matter is, is that I don't believe I got saved until after I got out of that church and heard Robert Breaker. Because Robert Breaker is constantly preaching the gospel over and over and over again. He says it over and over in his videos. Now, I was told the gospel, as I said in that Catholic church, but I didn't really grasp the fundamentals of it. So I was wandering around. Okay, I was wandering all around trying to produce good works and live right for God. And it was not working. I was overcome of my sin. I was debating on whose side I was on. I was having nightmares all the time about going into perdition, falling into hell and everything like that. And so finally, I heard Robert Breaker say it one night. The gospel is in the same way that I would present it. Okay, that for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ down into it. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He was crucified on the cross of Calvary, shedding his blood and water for the forgiveness of our sins and taking the wrath of God meant for us upon himself. He died, he rose again on the third day, he was seen of many, and he, he has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And I realized that all I have to do is believe that without trying to present myself as good enough or to maintain it or to reach any sort of goal. And suddenly, I have a dream where I'm threatened by a demonic entity that says, I will come against you with everything I got. I said that in this comment here. I rebuked that entity. I woke up and I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And guess what happened? I started to conquer my sins outwardly. And my inward man was changed dramatically. Okay. Oh, more and more that continues to happen. I don't have a desire to do the things of old, like play video games that are obsessively violent. I don't have a desire to do all those things anymore, like listening to satanic music. Now, I'm not judging you if you play video games. Or if you listen to music, everybody has their own walk with G with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And some of you can handle those things without going into a sin sinful place with them. But an alcoholic, as I say, shouldn't drink alcohol. I had problems with video games. I had problems with music because of how they affected me as a person. So that is my own personal journey with Jesus Christ. And I desire to please Christ. I want to live for Christ. Now, my good works are not contributing to my salvation. And I am not required to produce those good works because do good works are not relevant to salvation. They are a result of it. But that doesn't mean that we can say that if this person doesn't help, help and do all these things that they're not saved. No, because what saves us is faith in Jesus Christ. And the true fruit of that is what happens in the inward man. Okay, not the outward man. The fruit is distinct from good works. So we can't, that's where the Lordship goes wrong. Lordship salvation is say, if you don't help granny across the street, you're not saved because you're not producing the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is inward. The first fruit we produce is the fruit of salvation. You can find that in Romans 6. Okay? It's not good works. Sanctification, fruit, good works, salvation. Four distinct things. It's very important that you distinguish between them. So when somebody comes along and tells me that good works are required for salvation, we are not both right. That is heresy. There are hundreds and hundreds of people out there that think they need to earn their salvation. 
Jesus said he is the only way to salvation and he meant it. He said, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. But the thing is, is you're not believing on him and what he has done for you if you don't believe the gospel. Even Paul said it in the comments that you deleted for some reason. If your faith is in vain, if you do not believe in the resurrection, then your faith is, you have believed in vain. Now, this is a correction of a false doctrine that was going around in there similar to the Sadducees. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith also vain. You must believe the gospel and what Christ has done and what he is doing for you. Part of that gospel is what? The all-sufficient sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That means that even the thief on the cross believed in once saved, always saved, because all once saved, always saved is, is a deeper understanding of the gospel of salvation. That's it. And what does the Bible tell us about this? Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. What would you call heresy if not the works of darkness, but rather reprove them? Revelations 22, which does talk about being in the first love, but it also establishes that we are to contend for the gospel. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst bear them, which are evil, and thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. We are to try people who claim to know the truth, but are liars. 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We are in those days. Titus 1.11, Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. How much heresy out there from these, from these prosperity gospel nonsense do you see? And you know what they're doing? They're leading people off a cliff. If we could see into the spirit world, we would see people screaming in agony as they're going over a cliff into hellfire in these churches. Do you understand? And the whole time, the, the pastor of that church is sitting there counting the money as he's knocking them off, pushing them in, at their backs into this pit. And he himself is going to end up in there in the end. But all those people, if we can reach even one of them, it's worth it. What does it say in Titus 2, 12 through 13? Well, 13 is where we want to be. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Salvation is what makes things pure. Our salvation is what purifies us, it sanctifies us, and perfects us in standing. We are perfected in our standing. 1 Corinthians 5.11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or extortioner, with such one, know not to eat. For what I, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Whether this person is saved or not, we have a obligation to call these kind of things out. To the point of putting them out of community with us. That's not that's not loving and like coming up, patting them on the back and and being kind. We don't killing them with kindness doesn't always work. Sometimes people are stubborn. I'm going to keep doing this. I don't care. Fine. Then you're not going to be a part of this church anymore. If you're going to live with Satan, you're not. You cannot live with Satan and drink of the the cup of, of demons and and live with Christ at the same time. It's one or the other. You will be chastised as a Christian and you need to be put out of the church if you are unsaved because a little leaven liveneth the whole bunch. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. We have adversaries in this world. We are con to contend for the gospel of our salvation, for the gospel of faith. I'm getting sick and tired of these people that say I'm causing contention because I'm defending Jesus Christ. 
No, that's not contention. That is what we are supposed to do to reprove the unfruitful works of darkness, false gospels, heresy, lies, sinful behaviors that in the sense of just accepting them as though they're normal. Oh, it's okay to be a gay Christian. It's okay to be a murderer, an abortion. No, it is not okay. We are to strive to obey God regardless of whether or not it's a matter of salvation, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Why would I say that when I believe in one saved, always saved? Because the Bible tells us clear as day that no murderer has a eternal life abiding within them, okay? Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him, within him. If you're a Christian and you went out and had an abortion, you are not saved. Okay? You're not. Especially if you didn't care about it. Now, why would I say that? Am I making an exception here? Well, there are some people out there that are forced to get abortions. Okay? There are some people that are just so beat down, they got people breathing down their neck and everything else, in the, and they don't have a choice in the matter. Okay? I got to make, either, you know, that people's lives are, are like that. Sometimes, okay? That's just the way it is. It's awful out there. But this is not a joke. I'm not going to stop contending for the gospel. They said the same thing to Paul. He's fiery in person. Or fiery in his letters, but he's weak in person. Well, too bad. If you don't like my videos, then don't watch them. If you don't like Mr. Christian's videos, don't watch them. If you don't like Tim Henderson's videos, don't watch them. If you're going to go out there and be buddy buddies with darkness... That's your, that's your prerogative. That's not what we're supposed to do as Christians. Light has no place with darkness and darkness no place with light. It's one or the other. Who's, whose realm are you going to dwell in? You can't have your foot in both doors. Now you might be saying, all I'm trying to tell you, Diamond, is that I want you to preach gently to those that are lost. I do. I'm not preaching just to... What I'm doing right now... When I preach about our eternal security, I'm preaching against heresy and I'm building the, my brothers and sisters up. That's what that's for. If I preach towards a person that is readily receiving the gospel, I am gentle. I am concerned. I am. I do what I'm supposed to do. Simple as that. Now, I'm going to end this video here. Before that, I'm going to show you guys that I have a another video coming up. This is my editing software. And this is going to be about being blotted out of the book of life. You can see it's pretty long. It's going to be 59 minutes and I'm responding a little bit to that deacon, but that's not what this whole video is. It's not a response to him. It's just, I'll respond to some of the things. I'm probably going to add an addendum to this video as well, because there's some things I missed or could have clarified better, but yeah. So keep an eye out for that. And if, um, I know most of you are probably pretty steady on the fact that we can't be blotted out of the book of life. It's a rather weak argument, but believe it or not, there's a lot more to address here. And I highly recommend that you strengthen yourself by watching this video and looking into the matter for yourself because uh, you need to be able to answer someone that might be having more trouble than this and can't rest in the fact of what John, 1 John 5, 4 through 5 says, okay? We need to be able to answer all the verses and understand that there's two different books, the book of life and the Lamb's book of life, all right? And stuff like that. So just make sure that you are built up on this so that you don't you don't get blindsided when somebody else who's a little a little bit wants a little bit more details comes to you. Or somebody comes up and in her trapped in heresy says we can be blotted out, we can be blotted out. You know, you want to have an answer for that kind of stuff, okay? But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I'm probably not gonna publish this video today because the editing is taking longer than I expected, not to mention when I finally do edit this video, it's gonna take several hours to complete the edits and you know, all that stuff. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen and amen. I'll see you soon. God bless again.